this video, I'm gonna be refinishing my porch and showing you how I do it. Oh, without using chemicals. Let me start at the beginning and take you through my process. Big thank you to Decked for sponsoring this video. First, let me show you the porch beforehand. Honestly, it isn't in that bad of shape, but my reason for refinishing it is I cannot stand the orange color the previous owners picked out. I've dealt with it for years, but now it's time to refinish it to more of a cedar brown, which is the color I went with when I rebuilt the falling apart staircase. Since I want to go with a stain and not paint, that means I first need to get the orange finish off. The most common way to do this is to use a chemical stripper. If you're not familiar with the process, I'll leave you a link to a friend who did a good job covering how to do it. But I personally did not want to use a stripper. One, I actually did a few test spots on my upper porch to see how good it would work and how much it would take. It did a decent job, but when using the pressure washer to blast it off, it tears up the grain. It also uses up a ton of water, and with me having such a large area to do, it would also be pretty expensive. So instead, I rented a floor sander from the big box store and decided to try sanding the old finish off. I haven't seen this done before, so I think it's a little unorthodox, but stay with me. Now, these sanders are intended to refinish indoor floors that are typically nice and flat. The problem with an outside deck is these boards are not flat. There is some cupping to them, corners are popping up, and plenty of nails are popping up as well. These, all these protruding heads will rip up a belt in a heartbeat. So they all need to be flush before coming through with the sander. However, since I'm not a fan of nails, they're always gonna pop out like this over time. I come through and I pry them up and then I drive in a screw instead. Then for boards like this that are popping up in certain places, one, I do try to take out the nails and run in screws, but then if I can't, I will pre-drill to prevent splitting and then drive in another screw to try to pull the board as flat as possible. But if it doesn't work, that's another great thing about the sander is that it's gonna come through and do a pretty decent job at making the deck back to level. Next, before bringing in the sander, I removed all of the railing. Removing the long stretches was pretty easy as there are just a few toenails going into each post. I used a Sawzall with a demo blade on it to cut right through each nail and then just kicked it over. Oh, and I'm replacing all the railing with something a little more modern. But if that weren't the case, then I would have left them intact and needed to use stripper on the railing to remove all of the old finish. It's handy to have the railing gone though because now I was ready for sanding and this will allow me to use the big sander to get all the way to the edge. You see me pulling my tools from the drawers in my truck bed. When working on jobs like this outside of my shop, it is very convenient to load my deck drawers with the tools I'll need. Then just back up my truck to the site and have everything close but organized. For this job, I loaded in things like a cat's paw, flat bar, three pound maul, sawzall, drills, a sander, and of course, hearing and eye protection. The drawers have plenty of space for an assortment of power tools, but can also fit a variety of decked boxes if you need to hold organized smaller items. By keeping everything in my decked drawers, cleaning up at the end of a job is quick and easy. And big thank you to Decked for being a supporter of my channel. Okay, on the sanding, I am again going with an unorthodox way, but hear me out. Actually, let me take you to my top porch where I did a few tests before tackling this lower porch. See, it's typical to use these sanders to go with the grain direction of the board, meaning you would pull the sander this way along the deck. However, this was the result of two passes doing just that. And as you can see, it removed some of the old finish, but a massive amount of chemicals would still be needed to remove the rest. Over here, I turned the machine at a 90 to go perpendicular to the grain, and in one pass, it removed almost 95% of the finish. Looking closer at the grain, you can see some chatter, but in my opinion, it looks fine, and it isn't nearly as bad as the pressure washer does with the chemical route. With this in mind, I am tackling the lower porch with this method. The way the sander works is there is a drum at the bottom that can be raised or lowered by a handle at the top. A new belt can easily be slipped on and off whenever you need to replace it. I started at one end of the porch and worked my way down. You'll see that I had to divide it in half where I started with the machine at the house and pulled it back until I almost fall off the porch. But it's worth noting that I never did. I went kind of slow, really just watching how much it was taking off or leaving behind to dictate my speed. 
On this side, I would raise and lower the drum on every pass. So I would get the standard positioned at the start of a new row and then lower the handle to drop the drum as I started moving the machine backwards. Once I got to the end of the row, I would lift the handle, then reposition the sander by moving it to the next row. Now, I personally would overlap my runs by about half or sometimes even a third. Again, I let how much it was removing dictate my choice. Of course, flatter portions of the deck require less overlap. It might seem like it goes slow, but I threw on some music in my ISO tunes and I felt like it went really quick. One side took me about an hour and a half to complete. On the next app though, I wanted to try something a little different. Instead of raising and lowering the handle on each and every pass, I left the handle down, but made sure to always keep the machine moving, just like I would with the belt sander when flattening a countertop, which is what I was doing last week. This is definitely more taxing on the body because you're dancing with it instead of walking, and there is more room for error on gouging your boards if you don't constantly keep it moving around. But it did cut the time in half on how long it took me to sand the remaining side. So two options to get it done. Let's see, other notes on this part is just make sure to empty the bag every little bit. Then uh, for the sandpaper, I got the lowest grit possible, which is grit 24. Oh, and make sure to not run over the cord. You'll see that I drape it around my neck for easy management. If you're curious about pricing, this was $68 to rent for the day, which I think is super reasonable as you can get a ton done in just a few hours, then the added bonus of not using chemicals and wasting a bunch of water. Plus, since I sanded it, it leveled all the high spots out and looked great. Oh, for the areas around the house and post where the sander couldn't get because of its big old body, I just grabbed my three inch belt sander. This thing is designed with a flat side just for instances like this where you need to get up flush to something. However, if you don't have one, then using a little bit of chemical stripper on spots is still a win over having to use it on the entire thing. Whew, man, look how good of a job that did. Honestly, I was so impressed. Of course, there are still some spots remaining, but honestly, it just does not bother me. I think it's little enough to blend right into the stain that will come next. However, if it did bother you, then doing a spot check with the belt sander would work. The last part for refinishing is the easiest part. It's just throwing down some new stain. Know that they make these mop looking applicators that make staining a flat surface easy. It's just like mopping a floor. It only took me about 40 minutes to coat the entire area. Now my boards are really dried out, so after applying this first coat, I'll let it dry for about a day or two, then come back with a second. But just like that, I have one more area that is no longer orange. Truly, it is amazing how such a big project like this can be so simple and quick to do. If refinishing a porch or a deck has been on your to-do list, then I hope that this video has given you a little bit of insight on the process and maybe some inspiration on how you can tackle it in an unorthodox way. Stay tuned because I'm about to turn this area into even cooler of a space. So I will see you on whatever I'm working on next. Hey Bubba, come here. Oh, hi. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs>